Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm here doing a review of the x right Color Checker video. I'll give you a quick view here. And the reason I'm doing this is because a while back I did a video on the iCobra monopod. And for some reason, like the reds turned out orange, which was quite embarrassing. And I am not going to do that again. So the way I use this is I hold it up toward my face black at the bottom and I move it left and right and up and down because when I use this I don't want any glare and then for some of the things some people like to hold it sideways if you want to use the RGB parade for a white balance so we'll hold it that way as well and we'll go back and hold it right side up so as you can see there's there's um skin tones on on this side where my finger is right now these are skin tones and here these will these colors will line up with the vector scope and then of course you have your white to black and then we'll go over what that means and how i use it and all that other good stuff so let's go on to final cut pro and see what we can do thank you everybody all right so we're here back in final cut pro 10 and the first thing we're going to do, of course, is check our exposure and all that good stuff. So we got up our RGB parade and we'll just go ahead and just tweak the exposure really quick. You know, the midtones, the lows, just do a quick tweak before we start doing some other stuff. OK, so now that we got that done. Let's find an acceptable, well, oh, that one looks pretty good. So an acceptable image of the color checker. And for this one, we're gonna go to the vector scope. And then we're gonna expand this out to make it bigger. So you can go ahead and hit Control Command 1, or you can go up here and show in Workspace and just click Browser, either one will work. All right, so then we're gonna go over and we're gonna throw a mask on installed effects get a draw mask and throw a draw mask on go ahead and close that back up all right go over here to our video there we see our draw mask and the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to outline the colors that we will see in the vector scope so just outline those we'll go ahead and make this uh 200 maybe just a little bit so we can see it not too big let's go 100 percent and adjust it a little bit there we go now if you look in our vector scope you can see like a little spider that points to the red magenta blue cyan green and yellow um, but if we want to make these spider legs a little better or a little better a little bigger we can go back over here to the color board and turn our saturation all the way up and you see how the spider gets bigger make it a little bit easier to tell if we're on the right colors or not so we'll go back here and the next thing we want to do is bring up a new color board but this time we're going to do hue and saturation curves and then we're going to use a little eye drop and select the colors As you can see, as I select the colors, it makes dots and lines, you know, dots are nodes along the line. And then we can go ahead and adjust this. For instance, for yellow, if you noticed, the arm goes up and down. So let's point it right to yellow. Let's look at our green. I just want to adjust that. I want to make the leg, you see how it's all fuzzy? And we're going to get the leg a little bit more in line there. Move the yellow a little bit. There's the green leg. Point it to the G. And there's the cyan. We'll point that to the cyan. The blue leg will point to the B for blue. That looks about right. Magenta. Uh, right about there, maybe. And for the red, we're going to go all the way over here and move a little bit. So as you can see, our colors are a little bit off, and now they should be spot on. And the way you can tell this is to go back, and we'll turn off our draw mask. Go back to view and fit. 
and we'll go ahead and turn our saturation back down. So as now, now you can see that our colors look pretty good. We can also check our skin tones if you want. So let's find where my finger's not in the way. That one looks pretty good. Let's go back to the draw mask. And we'll just go ahead and reset this. And we'll make a new one. This time we're gonna go over the skin tones. And so there we are over the skin tones. Let's go ahead and make this bigger. Yeah, so we can get it right in the middle here. And we'll clean this up a little bit. Move it a little bit over. This a little bit off. And all we want are the skin, skin tone colors. So as you can see, everything is right on the line. So my skin tones are pretty much where they should be. We can boost the saturation if you want to check that. And as you can see, they're right on the line. And that's where we want the skin tones. We can also go back to our hue and saturation curves. And we can do the eyedropper again. And you can see it pretty much is put in it all in the same spot. So if we wanted to move them, we could make another node here or control point and move it up and down. But the skin tones look really, really good right on the line. We could also take that draw mask and put it on some skin somewhere if you want to check that out and see how that looks. So let's go back to fit and let's find a headshot and eh, a little bit better headshot than that. Uh, we'll reset our draw mask, do a draw mask, and let's just do some skin tones. We'll make this bigger, of course. Move it around till we can see it. And here you can see our skin tones are a little bit off. So we can go back to our hue and saturations. And we can add a node right here. And we can just move the skin tones just a little bit if you want to to make them a little bit cleaner or clearer. Um, I'm going to move them just a tad bit over. Okay, and as you can see, um, our skin tones should look much better. One thing you do want to make sure you do is to hold the shift key when you're moving the control points. Sorry about that. I should have said something and I did not. So make sure you hold the shift key so you don't go left and right. You just go up and down. So let's turn our draw mask off and then we'll go over to our color board. Make sure our saturation is correct. You know, our exposure is now a little bit off. You know, a little too bright. So we'll clean this up a little bit, maybe move the mid-tones just a tad, make it a little darker, a little bit more contrasty. All right, so that looks pretty good. So that's the way I basically do it real quick with the x right color checker video. There are some other things you can do, for instance, um, some people like, like using the RGB parade. And we can go over here to our draw mask again, reset it, do a draw mask. And we can go around the whites and blacks and, and grays here. All right, so we'll go ahead and make this 200%. That a little bit too big, just make it 100. Kind of fill up the screen here. And then we'll go over to the waveform and RGB parade. And you can see, you can also do your colors this way if you like. Um, and line up the color levels. Make sure they're all the same height or the same IRE. Um, I don't like this way because it's not as precise. You can also go to the RGB overlay and make sure all the colors line up and there's none sticky, sticking out. Like all these should be white, but that's a little bit harder in my opinion. 
so I don't do it this way. Some people like doing it this way. If you have the smaller video checker that only has white, gray, and black, it's a little easier to see and a little easier to do. But with the color checker video, I just don't like doing this way, so I don't do it that way. So hopefully this helped you. Have a great day or night, and happy shooting, everybody. Thank you.